Hello there YouTube, this is Zerkzank Says, and uh, I I look, uh, I'm trying out a new look here, it's called Zerkzank Says Look. It's the look that I wear when uh, my hair's really long, really messy, I put on this, uh, this fucking sick black beanie, put my hair inside it, that way you can't see how shit it is. Facial hair, who cares, you know, if I shave it away, it'll just grow back, right? That's the classic excuse for lazy people of why they don't do a task. Well, if I just do this one thing, eventually it's going to go back to the way it was before, or it won't matter in such and such a span of time. Like, why should I care about my life now? Because in a hundred years, or two hundred years, anything I ever did or said won't matter. And to some extent that's true, but it's not really useful to think like that. It's not useful for you and it's not useful for other people. Then you say, why does it matter what's useful? And that's a question and answer that I really am struggling to to cope with and not to cope with, but um, to come to any sort of reasonable conclusion on. It would be better if my background wasn't white because then I wouldn't have these bits of hair sticking out. But you know what, fuck it, it doesn't matter. My hair's not that bad. It's uh, it's shit, but it's not that bad. Um, I don't like wearing hats, you see. No, the, the what I'm trying to get to really is that you you got a constant battle between this, uh, saying things matter or things don't matter, and it's just oh, once again another existential crisis. Oh, big deal. Who cares? You know, get over yourself. But it is important to me to get this one sussed out before I continue on throughout my life because I think a lot of people want to know if what they're doing matters. You know, you want to know if your life is meaningful or if your life is worthwhile or if it's not, you know, what you, you need to really know if your existence has a purpose or if it doesn't because if it doesn't, why do it? you know, just for the sake of it, you know, or it's like, oh, I'm alive, might as well live out for another, what, 80 years of life and see what happens, you know. Curiosity can only take you so far, so I'm just saying, like, you need to have a purpose. And recently I've been watching a lot of uh, Jordan B. Peterson videos. He has a, a lot of, uh, I don't want to call it self-help because it's not self-help, it's insightful uh, analysis of religious and non-religious psychological aspects of the human mind. So, uh, thinking about it like, I don't know what you'd call it, but it, it's just, it's very useful insights. And uh, one of the things that he mainly talks about is you, the, the sort of, the decision of uh, the people make between saying nothing matters and then they start to realize that oh, because nothing matters not there's nothing's really good and nothing's really bad nothing matters and it doesn't uh, that being upset or being happy or, or moderating yourself or making sacrifices you know it all becomes stupid and the really all you should ever do is live second by second on impulse uh, do what you want to do in the moment don't think about the future because the future doesn't matter the present doesn't matter and the past doesn't matter or on the other hand you say everything matters everything you say and do has meaning uh, therefore um, and and but saying everything matters gives you a bunch of responsibility because then everything matters whereas Saying nothing matters means you have no responsibility, which means it's kind of easy. It's easy to live a life where you think and act as if nothing matters. And very difficult uh, to live in a life where everything matters. And if in a world where everything matters, but you're not making uh, valid sacrifices to justify the suffering of your existence, it just gets worse and worse. So, I mean, you try and counter that by then saying, well, nothing matters, therefore you get rid of that whole responsibility so you don't feel guilty for, for wasting your time, but then you also realize that you're still wasting time because, 
nothing matters anyway. And anything you do in the time period between your present and the point where you die didn't have to happen. You know, you could have just killed yourself. You didn't, for whatever reason. So I'm still in this existential crisis. I don't want to call it a crisis because it's not really critical. Uh, it's just something that I just can't come to any reasonable conclusion with, really, to say that um, if you say, oh, do do good things and do, don't do bad things, uh, and then your life will feel great, or the the, the classic one from the, the Jordan B. Peterson uh, book of advice, clean your damn room, you know. Well, I've cleaned my room. I clean my room almost uh, every every time I start to think like, hmm, I really want to be doing something productive right now, except I don't know what productive things to be getting on with. I just clean my room uh, to the point where I can't clean it anymore. And if I did, it would just be, you know, so insignificantly minor cleaning. That's not sustainable enough in the long term to get any kind of real... Uh, what would you say reward or justification for existing now I can't say relativistically uh, to the overall human experience that my life is bad because you know like I say uh, like you can see and understand anyone in this situation can't complain really because you're living in a house you have water coming out of your taps presumably you've got walls and windows uh, so that it's warm or cool if you've got air conditioning like Jesus that, that's one thing of itself probably get food in your house so you're not starving you know you can eat when you're hungry uh, you could probably got a nice bed to sleep on and all of this you know your life is not a struggle so at any point where you don't just think hey my life's amazing I need to just chill out and just go with the flow. It's it's not really uh, that's I don't think that when you've got all of these things, you're just looking for more because that's that's kind of I think and people suggest this that it's just like that's what you've evolved to do. You need to have conflict or challenge. You can't necessarily you can't be happy or you, the, the happiness doesn't even matter you can't be uh, comfortable for any extended period of time genuinely have everything you want and, and, and not expect uh, to start looking for conflict or just seeking something interesting to have happen and I'm reaching a point where nothing in, nothing is interesting and nothing feels important or relevant now trying to find relevance in this is is somewhat easy I mean I, I can I personally can understand and agree and say that I think that doing things for the benefit of uh, the human race however you however you want to sort of skew that doing things for your local community and uh, doing things for yourself, for your family, doing things that help and a somewhat helpful, beneficial, positive influence, you know. I agree with that all of that is fine and uh, that is, if you want to say, the right thing to do and th 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 anything within that line of thinking is uh, justifiable, you know, anything is justifiable. But... I don't see a situation where any of that becomes possible uh, to to just to, to actually act out and uh, like w what do you do in order to do that? What do you do to make the 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 world a better place? If if you want that to happen, how do you do it? It's not easy, uh, and it's not obvious either. I don't know what that would consist of so at this point I can't necessarily do that what I could do to get to that point you know one step at a time figure out what it is to do and then do it you can't do it without knowing what it is 
so figure out what it is. And figuring out figuring out what it is is not easy either. So it's 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 a real dilemma that I'm coming up with. I've not come up with this. It's fucking it's the human question for like thousands of years. So I, just the way I phrased that was pretty poor. What I've been able to boil this down to mainly is, uh, I think, in part, is due to anyone else who is in a similar situation to me. It's where you've basically you've finished uh, going through the education system, which is kind of like a system that pushes you forwards. I mean, my, my camera's flipped, so that was backwards. Pushes you forwards through um through life for like what from when you're five years old all the way up until you're in your very early 20s and then you're thrown out into the real world so to speak the world of no longer people saying do this do this uh and having your parents i guess or carers or I mean, this is just in general, because there are people who don't have carers earlier on, or people who don't go through the education system, or people who drop out earlier. But I'm saying, you get to the end of your education, and it's just like, now what? What do you do then? Even before then, I'm sure if you had enough time to think, you'd always come to the conclusion, hmm, what should I be doing right now? I should be doing my work, but since I'm not doing my work, I'll play games. And... For a long time, for me at least, playing games or watching films uh, or watching anime, you know, that's the Japanese cartoons, uh, those uh, Chinese flip books, you know, those uh, uh, Korean wall paintings. I don't know, I'm trying to make memes here, it doesn't work, I'm trying to be serious as well. Semi serious. Uh, you know, I'm never really full on serious. Maybe that's a problem, but. You get to a point where it's like none of that entertainment stuff feels fulfilling. Maybe, maybe you're at that stage, maybe you're not. If if entertainment is still fulfilling and entertaining for you, I mean, you don't really have much of a problem unless you're watching a film and you're thinking, "I'd rather not. I would rather be doing something that makes me feel. Uh, you know, I would rather be making tomorrow better than enjoying this moment now." Or, I, I'm glad to enjoy this moment, even if I suffer for it tomorrow. It doesn't matter, you can sort of trade your suffering every now and again. But at the moment, it's like, I'm not having fun, and I'm not being productive. Uh, so, personally, it's, it's a real dilemma. Uh, and I think most people who get to this stage in life will probably be in the same situation. Unless you, you know, you get a job, uh, and it's like, well, that's probably a good start, you know, having a job, no matter what it is you're doing, whether it's like serving coffee or flipping burgers or cleaning toilets, just anything that's, uh, that's, that's a job. And, and I say a job because it's definitely a job if it's something that you wouldn't otherwise be doing unless you were getting money for it. Then it comes back to this whole situation of is getting money enough? Well, you need money to survive, so you're saying is surviving enough? Yeah, um, surviving is enough reason to live purely for the sake of surviving. You could argue that it is because that's what your in genetics kind of want you to do. You want your body, regardless of what you think, like, oh, I hate my life and I uh, wish I was dead. Your body obviously is striving to keep you alive so uh, evolutionarily you're supposed to stay alive you know it's what your body and that's what your ancestors wanted it's what your your parents wanted it's, it's what your genetics want it's what life itself wants to survive flourish spread out and so on so you know staying alive is something that your body wants but is it enough you know because you get to a point where it's like you know I, I i do the job the job's easy uh and there's no challenge you need because you, you need some level of challenge 
And you could say, well, the, make the job challenging. Well, what if you can't? Uh, getting a job in the first place, once again, I've not even tried to do that yet because I can't. I'm in an in-between period. But it, that's probably why I've been doing so much thinking about this. My thoughts are all over the place because, funnily enough, university, like it was supposed to, hasn't actually taught me how to uh, manage my thought process and get it into any clear and concise manner. I can roughly get a, be there some some manner or the other by speaking, but university is supposed to teach you how to write essays, how to structure an argument properly, how to back up what you're saying, how to validate it, and you know prove that what you're saying is correct in some sense. All I can do is make assumptions and suppositions and then someone says, oh, you, what you said here doesn't make sense. It's like, oh, I thought I explained it. When I said it, I thought that I'd already explained it or I thought I was going to explain it forwards and then miss out loads of points, you know, because you can't go backwards while you're speaking. Maybe you can if you remembered what you said, like, second by second, but it's difficult to do that. Um, so you should write writing stuff down, going back to what you've written and then checking back to what you wrote. I don't know. I c c can't even speak English anymore. It's fucked me over uh, writing dissertations and essays and stuff. Uh, so yeah, I mean, university, that was a huge mistake, maybe. I don't know. I, I, I still haven't decided how much of a mistake it was. It, it, it's taught me a lesson not the ones I wanted to learn uh, academically but it definitely has taught me a lesson so so what do you do I'm trying to make the decision now I've put it down to having the options of having fun in life you say nothing matters so I might as well just have as much fun as I possibly can or you say well I want to be as productive as possible. It doesn't matter about having fun. Being happy it doesn't matter. Just be useful because you know that that's the, 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 the ultimate sacrifice. Making a sacrifice for the betterment of yourself or for your species, for your family, and so on and so on. Family is one thing I want to get back to because... Uh, I think I wrote that down in this little document I'm looking at, and I didn't. But, um, yeah, fucking, as soon as you have kids, if you have kids, which you should, really, I mean, so you evolved and you're biologically responsible to do that, so it's stupid to not. But, um, if you have kids, you know, all of these problems just go away. Like you have a kid, and it's like, hey, th there we go, problem solved. What's, imp what's, what's important in my life? That that kid is important you know w what matters that you know <laughs> you've always got an answer it's like this kid is everything so kids you know forget all your existential problems at that point you've got kids and their survival is pretty much the most the only the only thing you care about I mean other than your own because the kid can't survive without you but other than that it's like uh yeah, I mean, kid, you can't actually, having said that, a kid can survive without you. So if it had to come down to you or the kid, you would obviously sacrifice yourself to save the kid, uh, hopefully. Anyway, th that that's besides the point, because I determined that having a kid to solve, ha having children to solve an existential crisis isn't, I don't, I don't think that's valid. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's reasonable. Finding any sense of um, romantic partnership also seems pretty much unreasonable and I'm, I'm not just saying that as in like g girls won't talk to me <laughs> because um, obviously I th you could say like oh I've not you've not tried hard enough you know you keep at it keep trying you'll get there eventually it's like well even if I do I don't think I'm in any state to be a proper, genuine, like, so there are two, there are two, uh, there are two types of people in this world. No, there are two types of people in the dating scene. 
uh, one type is the people who are looking for permanent, long-term, committed relationship. So their standards are pretty high in terms of what they're looking for. They want the right thing and they want to make sure it's the right thing. Then on the other hand, you've got people who just want quick, quick, easy sex. They, they, they don't, they don't care about, uh, whether you get along really that much, they just want to know that you're going to be a good fuck. So I encountered both of these types of people, um, and I don't appeal to either of them. I don't appeal to the to the to the to the girls who want a quick, easy fuck because, believe it or not, I have very limited sexual experience, and I'm not a liar. I'm an honest person. So I just say like, yeah, I, I really don't have any experience. And then, whoosh, poof, as soon as you say that, the these girls just forget it absolutely, completely, no interest. Uh, that's the girls who just want a quick, easy fuck anyway. So it's like, does it matter that you've lost that interaction? No, it doesn't. So you, you can get over that easily. On the other hand. There are the girls who want like more serious long term. I I would say like forever term until you, unless there's some like completely deal breaking catastrophic event. You know, the kind of proper long term one where you're actually both trying to make it work and not just going along with the the romance and then when that ends you move on. I mean like actual hardcore trying to make something last even when. There's no uh, chemical love left. It's just two people who have said, right, we're going to do this, you know. Now that's a pretty serious thing. And at fucking 22, no one wants that. Like, literally no, nobody wants that. Uh, I probably don't even want that because what the fuck do I even know? So, I, you're not gonna get the and the, I didn't mention the third type of person. I said there are two types of people. There's a third person in the middle, which is they want the serious thing, short term, and they want the lots of sex. So it's like it's a middle ground between like the one who wants a super serious, the one who just wants sex, and then they want like them in the middle. So you're thinking like one night stands, one month to two month relationships, and then ones that go on for like a year plus as the three sort of types and they're obviously overlap and in-betweens but you get what I'm saying super serious and not serious at all and then somewhere in the middle and it's just there's nowhere really you can place yourself in the uh, I, I cannot place myself in this realm especially at this age uh, with what? With no genuine, with no like actual things to offer. So like, uh, at the moment, I don't have a job. Uh, I don't have a house. I don't have a car. You know, and you kind of need these three things to be considered independent, functioning adult. So, not having any of those things immediately just makes you unviable for dating anyway. And being at an age where you're still developing, you're not even in the sort of it's like a 25 plus age range where you're not eligible for certain types of uh, tax breaks and you get the full minimum wage. So up until 25, you're still considered a young adult, I think. Uh, that's in the UK law, so whatever, wherever else. Not a full adult yet, so what does that mean? I don't know. So for me at least and f for most people in this situation you're not gonna be with somebody that you're gonna be with forever in a relationship so just I'd say forget about that or at least don't forget about it but just f you can't rely on that as a uh, as a suitable condition for existential fulfillment because as much as people say to you oh you ha ha like you, you can't look for someone else if you're not in the correct state uh, of mind yourself because that's kind of bullshit because people can help each other and then be better together than if they were independent and you don't have to be happy in of yourself uh, entirely to 
to, to be with someone else. That's kind of some bullshit. Uh, I want I want to call it. Would you call it propaganda or just myth, mythological? It's, uh, it's just like an urban myth or just something that people want to say to make them sound self sound smart. The whole if you can't love yourself, how can you love someone else? Kind of thing. You don't even have to love someone to be with them. You just have to say, hey, let's stay together and make this work because the legal system works better this way. Biologically, if we have a child together, we, you know, this works better. It's like, oh yes, you're right. Yes, male. Yes, female. You, whatever you, you're talking to the opposite person. Say so like, I need your seed, or uh, I need your ovaries to uh, make this makes happen. Birth this child. You know, cooperation, collaboration. That's uh, that's why I can't get laid, isn't it? Because because of the way I just described that. Ooh, that was sex, by the way. Um, just just so you're clear, sex for making a uh, making a baby, getting pregnant, you know. That aside, let's, let's get back to what I was trying to say before. You want to live your life in a way that, when you're on your deathbed, you're saying to yourself, with as minimal regrets as possible, you don't want to be in a life where you uh, had too much fun. And, you, and you're about to die and you think, you know what, I, sh I could have lived up to my potential and I really should have uh, done more. I mean, if you're about to die, it doesn't matter too much. You can argue to yourself. It's like, well, I'm about to die. What's the point in having regrets? But let's pretend that you really care and let's pretend that everything matters. Because I think, at the end of the day, everything does matter. I don't necessarily think I act like I do. I think like it does, which causes me a lot of problem because I acting in the opposite way to what I'm thinking. This goes back to that whole deontology thing actually. Uh you know, actions versus intentions. And I'm thinking like isn't having an intention or isn't thinking something technically an action? Uh it's just like do you act on your beliefs or do you act on what you're thinking, does, does having to act on it really mean that that's what you, right, is, isn't getting upset about not doing something that you intended to do count as an action? I think getting upset is an action of itself or feeling regret is also an action. Feeling bad is an action. It's an involuntary response to the fact that you're fucking wasting your time. That's what I think, like, because I feel bad every day that I don't do something useful and productive. But then you say, well, you don't want to do anything useful or productive because you act in a way that shows that you don't want to be doing that. So you use like you wake up in the morning and you just play games all day or you wake up and you just browse YouTube, make these kind of videos. So clearly you don't want to do anything about it. Otherwise, you would be doing something about it. I don't think that that is entirely true because if I didn't want to do it, why would I feel bad about not doing it? Is it because I think I should feel bad and then I'm just sort of tricking myself into it? I don't know. How deep can you go with this? Anyway, the point is, going back to the whole deathbed thing, you determined that things matter. Um, and let's just say, for the sake of it, it's like... I don't the deathbed thing right d ignore that just think like uh cast your cast your mind to a position where it's like you you can think about the future and the past you can think about it any way you want but do you want a life of regret no you don't want to regret it do you want to be in a position where you think like yeah I had a fun life but I wasn't productive or do you want to have a productive life and think well I could have had more fun there are pros and cons to both of those sides, but I don't want to uh, be too old to do anything and to make a change and then think, holy shit, I should have done this. Or, like, I had so much fun, but I should have been productive. Can you do both? I think you can, but um, if one of the ways of having fun is 
lots of sex and drugs and indulgence and pleasure, that's going to inhibit your productivity. And just being productive also would inhibit the amount of fun you can have because there's no real upper limit to how productive you can be if you just just absolutely remove all interest in fun whatsoever and just replace it all entirely with productivity. So like the minute you wake up to the minute you go to sleep, fill that with productivity, that maximizes your productivity. Therefore, you can never regret it and say, I wasn't as productive as I could be because you were the right amount of productive. You were the most productive you could be. So you could never say to yourself, I wasn't productive enough. Then you could never feel bad about it. But then on the other hand, the whole fun thing. Respons- having fun means you have no responsibility, but there are no rewards. And usually there are no long-term positive outcomes. So is that fine? You say, well, I, I want to live in the moment, live in the present, and just enjoy life as it comes. And, and when it goes, it goes. Whatever. I don't know. It doesn't, you're not leaving any permanent mark. Do you have to? Not really. But it just feels empty. I think that that existence of just having fun feels empty. Especially, for me at least, now that fun things aren't even fun anymore. Like fucking hell. I don't find any form of entertainment to be enjoyable or fun. Like, none of it is even scratches the surface of interesting me. So, I don't know what to do about that. I was like, oh, well, just stop being productive. Then I sit there trying to be productive, and I'm not. It's boring. So is everything else. So what do you do? I mean, this is once again, I'm getting back to what I said at the start of the video, which is what the fuck do you do? I haven't figured that out yet, so if you came here to, to for that answer, I, I, I will say, like, well, I didn't necessarily promise you that I was going to give you the answer. I just supposed that it was a possibility that it could arise in, in the topic of conversation. But all I know is that if something's boring, then something must feel the opposite of that, which is fun. Or if something feels bad, then you can sort of get the opposite of that and determine things that way. Like, um... If there's a task you hate doing, think what the opposite of that task would be, and then try and assume that you might really like that. Uh, It's hard to think of what direct opposites of certain things would be, but, um... Yeah... In, the, in some weird example I can think uh, you might really hate killing somebody which I think I would probably hate doing uh, I don't want to do it actively so I would really hate it if I did do it so think what the opposite of that would be would be bringing someone back to life right so okay let's take it back a step and say Hurting somebody, really not enjoyable. Healing somebody, probably pretty good. So, I don't know what you can take from that. Try and align yourself to hurt people less and help people more. Um, that's what I want to try and do. Because uh, that's one thing I know for a fact uh, is almost always good helping people. But it's not easy or obvious to determine how and when and who because there's like, uh, there's a lot of people. I can't remember how many people there are on the planet because that's how much my brain has been uh, dumbed down by going to university. Also, here's another thing. If you didn't know this, this is fucking bullshit. Your IQ, apparently peaks at around 16 um, and then starts to go down at around 20 to 25 years old 
so intellectually I'm probably about at the peak of what I or was already at the peak of what I could potentially do and I wasted that entire time uh, studying at university I don't want to call my course a waste of time just yet because there's still a bit of work I have to resubmit because uh, apparently my, my assignment wasn't good enough and I, I don't want my university to to give me a low grade for shit talking them because you know they probably shouldn't do that but they could do that it's always a possibility so I don't want to say anything negative about them uh, maybe it's not their fault maybe it's my fault I'd say yeah well that's, that's a great angle to spin on it it's kind of my fault for not really pushing myself with any extracurricular activities and kind of just assuming that I would learn everything I needed to learn in university even though I knew I wouldn't because there are a lot of things you don't learn in university it's not really their responsibility to teach you everything there is to know about life because how can they but um it's definitely not prepared me that well and I don't feel like I've learned something that uh, w it wasn't the best use of that period of time you know the sweet spot where you're at the peak of your intellectual uh, ferociousness where you can tackle really complex new things so like if you're going to do an engineering degree um, that's not that I mean th that's more in intensive than what I was doing for sure you know just looking at uh, it was games development games production so I don't know I don't want to say the subject was the problem but it definitely was for me at least should have been should have been astrophysics you know should have been something that's genuinely engaging and 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 difficult and something that you don't have enough time to g get into all these existential stupidity videos making about like this it's like hey what's the meaning of life is there any meaning in life it's like fuck that i have to revise and study uh fucking uh, quantum field theory or something i don't even know because that's how little i know about that it's like oh i gotta study for this test that i gotta do it's like ah, i i don't i never studied for tests when i was in school i'm like no but look at this and they'll show me like a formula i'm like yeah you probably better study that what the fuck is that i don't know what the fuck that is um, that's the point I think where you know that <laughs> if someone shows you something and you don't even have you can't even approach it with some sense of logic you know what the fuck am I looking at here it's like that's what you need to go to university that's what you should be learning in university it's like I can show somebody anything and explain anything that I've learned in university and they'll be like oh you went to university for that and I'll be like, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, I'm in debt for that. But the debt doesn't matter. It's more about the fact that I used that six-year period poorly. That's from 2011 to 2017. I call it the six-year period where I should have been at the peak of my higher-level education. Uh, and it's sort of going to go downhill after that. Here's another interesting fact, maybe didn't know uh, about the brain, that apparently it doesn't fully finish developing the frontal cortex until about age of 25 and that is the area where most of your social and creative processes come from I believe I can't no I don't know if that's exactly true but basically you don't fully finish developing your brain until 25 to 28 something like that which is also roughly around the period of time where your creativity drops. So, approaching 30, I will have, I'll be actively dumber and act and and much less creative. So, anything I ever wanted to do, I should have already started now or yesterday or like years ago because that, that, that not just me, that applies to everyone in this age period. It's like you really need to make the most of your time and you can't it's always difficult to convey that to somebody I mean I never believed that when someone said to me you know D -d do this you'll regret it tomorrow if you don't or you'll regret it in five years time 
And how do you how can you trust somebody that you'll regret it in five years time? It's really difficult to 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 understand exactly what the entire world is gonna be like in five years time and then make a decision in that very split second that yes if I do this now which I won't enjoy five years later I'll be glad I did you can't know that it's very difficult to know that I suppose that's what having faith in the future is all about but it's just fucking it's not easy especially when you're like 16 you don't know the value of that when you're 16 and you don't believe it your parents tell you oh yeah no you need to make the most of your make the most of it make the most of your university make the most of your school what do they know they don't know what it's like being in school but they do because they were in school they don't know what it's like when you get to your 20s and you think oh shit Maybe I should have listened to them. They did the same. You did the same. You know, everyone does the same. Most, Almost everyone does the same. There are definitely plenty of people who are very productive and always have been and always will be because it's a genetic thing. You know, productivity is a genetic thing. It's really hard to force yourself. If you're a lazy person, I don't want to use the word lazy, but... If you're a lazy person, it's very difficult to to forcibly activate a part of you that is like, right, now I'm creating this and I'm doing this. It's also very difficult for you to, for me at least, to, to find the state where that happens to be most activatable. Uh, like what triggers you into a productive mindset or a creative mindset? As opposed to just sitting around waiting for a creative spark or waiting for inspiration, you know, as a lot of people like to say, it's like, oh, I want to write my novel, but I'm looking for some artistic inspiration. Uh, I've encountered multiple problems with that. The first one is, when the fuck does that happen? Happens when you're in the shower. Well, you can't do anything when you're in the shower. Happens when you're about to go to sleep. Well, you're too tired to get anything done. So you're not going to get up and write a novel just as you're about to go to sleep uh, happens between the time period for me of between 2 and 6 a.m. Um, usually between 2 and 6 a.m. means unless you adjust your sleeping pattern to be that you're awake in that period of time and full energy then you're asleep during the day it's bad for your circadian rhythm or every now and again you stay up between two till six uh, and then recover your sleeping pattern then do the same recover your sleeping pattern do the same you're gonna only be writing for four hours a day or, or like uh, four hours a day and that day only happens like once a week or once every two weeks because you have to fix your sleeping pattern it's like what the fuck I came to realize that just sitting around waiting for things to happen isn't good enough you have to do it you have to go and do it you have to make it happen because when you do come to be writing your novel you'll quickly realize oh shit I suck at writing it's like as, as creatively inspired as you are as, as amazing as your ideas are you can't put them down onto a fucking document because you don't know what the fuck you're doing <laughs> you realize shit I don't have any experience writing because I write like one hour in my entire life when I felt like it and now I don't know how to do it so that's another thing if you want to do something you can't just wait around and then do it all at once at some point because you don't have enough practice at it you need to practice getting good at what it is that you want to do so that when you actually are in that mindset the perfect mindset to, to be getting it done you can just do it because you can't just do it if you don't have any practice, it's another thing that I um that I came to came to realize rather recently. Really, is that just waiting around for inspiration isn't enough to get anything done. Same with making these videos. It's like yeah, I was getting better at it, I think, by practice. But just waiting around until you have a good idea isn't enough. And 
waiting until you become really good at articulation is also not enough. You need to put the practice in, uh, otherwise you're not going to get to that state. So every now and again, you'll get to the state of flow, and you'll be like, oh hey, I can do it now. But you need to sort of bridge the gap and get better at doing it while you're not in that good mindset. So it's it's like tr training without um with like tr r trying to ride a bike without the stabilizers on, you know the the wheels that you have on the side of it to stop it from falling over. You just need to get good at doing it without assistance or doing it without being in the right mindset and then you just eventually you can do it at any point you can like you can be almost your most productive at any point in the day at any time you want like i use the novel writing one it's, it's a great example but you can apply it to anything like programming 3d modeling uh that's like my my scope of stuff that I know is so limited I don't even know what else there is that exists like that you can be good at doing other than creating shit um, solving problems hey there's there's one there's a cool one um, you get good at solving equations do you I don't know I don't know what uh, goes into physics. Like, let's just say you're only good at. It takes you a long time to solve a problem, and you only solve problems every now and again. It's like, just keep doing it, even when you don't feel like it, and eventually you get better at it. And that just sort of applies to almost everything. Do it, even when you don't feel like it, even when you know you're gonna write shitty. Like, I, I, I feel like every time I open the document, it's like, I don't want to write now, because anything I write now, I'll just go back and edit and delete and change because it'll be shit. It's like, yeah, that's the point. You, 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 you do that, you delete it, and then you, like, go over it, and uh, you learn, you get better at it, you practice. Same with this, fucking, except I'm not deleting my videos and editing them or anything. Uh... But at least I can go back and watch it and somehow retroactively learn. Don't do this. Or don't do this. Because um, every now and again, using videos as an example, I get the sort of uh, signal to my brain when I'm about to do something that I've done so many times in the past that it, that it doesn't work. I know, like, oh, wait, 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 wait a sec. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't say that. Or, or say this like this. And then you do that. And it's like, hey, I learned from my past, which I wouldn't have learned if I'd have only done it when I was doing it well. Like, yeah, I mean, you, you, you just, you need to have the, um, the rough and tumble, the difficulties to learn how to tackle them. It's like your immune system is a great uh, analogy for this. Like, you can, you, your body needs to fight a virus uh, your immune system needs to fight a virus or have like a dead uh, inactive version of the virus injected into you you know through the um fucking uh vaccine to know how to deal with it so if you're not getting your vaccines and you're not getting any viruses how are you supposed to learn how to deal with them by just sitting around waiting you're not it's just, so you got to take action and then, then but then it comes down to like the, the whole what do you actually want to do and this is a fucking ball ache of a this is a fucking difficult one it's like once you've cleaned your room once you've really sorted things out financially and uh i would say despite not having a job I'm in a position where financially it's not really a problem because uh, in, in like a month's time I stop living in student accommodation, I go live at my mum's house for a while, uh, it's not a great position to be in but it's, it's a temporary position you know, you get money from the government, uh, what's it called, 
universal credit, I think, in England. Uh, the dole, unemployment benefits, you, whatever that's called. You get that, you get your free money whilst you're looking for a job seeker's allowance, that's what it's called. You're looking for a job, you get a job. Like I say, you're stacking shelves at a supermarket, you're on the checkout, scanning things, beep, 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 you know. Uh, you walk home from that, right, you're back to this position again, of trying to think, why does my life feel so empty? It's been 50 minutes, this video, uh, and I've come to no conclusion, why does your life feel so empty? Uh, there's probably a good reason, do you, how do you find out how to solve it? You just wait around, I guess. But as I just said, waiting around isn't isn't good enough waiting around isn't gonna get you anything you gotta put in practice make sacrifices you know how do you know what to sacrifice how do you know what you want how do you know what you want now how can you be sure of it how do you know what you're gonna want in a year's time how do you know what you're gonna want in five years time you don't How do you know anything? You don't. You just gotta assume that based on evidence that's just repeated uh, repeatable results like if I do this this will happen or if this happens a thousand times this happens a million times it's probably gonna happen on the millionth and one what first the million and first it's gonna do it a hundred times it's gonna happen on the hundred and first time you know uh but do that like times a million and you can be pretty sure that 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 that's something that you can that's true you can have faith in and you can believe in but when it comes to something as subjective as your own future and your own well-being and your own positive outlook uh, it's really difficult to make those kind of decisions because you don't know what you're going to want. You don't know what you already want because you can't. You know, like, I, I, I don't know how, how, what percentage or what amount of your own thought process is uh, just arbitrary, you know, like, just beyond your control. It's all subconscious. You don't think what you're going to think next because you can't know what you're going to think next. You can kind of get onto a train of thought and predict it, but is that even you predicting what you're thinking and what you're going to say next? Like, what the fuck even is that? That is, and, and then dreams on a whole other completely different topic of like, how the fuck do you dream, the things that you dream up even get into your head in the first place? And how does your brain articulate that? Like most of the time it doesn't even come close to articulating or interpreting it because it doesn't know how to or like what is what is anything that you dream and where do the dreams come from where does anything that you subconsciously think of come from probably electrical signals chemistry of your brain you know your brain is just electrical signals and uh, chemicals and there's not much more to it than that that's just physical properties of it but even still, it doesn't help you calm down and uh, think, what should you do? Because you, the thing is, like, no matter what any philosophy says, no matter what any, no matter what anyone says, you still want to know an actual uh, practical answer to, to, to any question you have. You want to ask something in a way that actually has some form of way that you can react to it you can take like hmm yes and then do so you ask a question you get an answer and then you do something um and i'm still in a phase where i'm asking questions a shit ton of questions getting vague answers and just not doing anything and i don't know how uh sustainable that is i don't know how many other people are in this position 
I want to assume that it's not just me, and I hope it's not. But also, I do hope it is, because it means, like, if everyone else is having this problem, uh, is it... Cause first of all, I'm assuming it's a problem. It's probably not a problem. A lot of people just say, what the fuck, just, just, just do what everyone else is doing. Like, uh, you know, do, it seems to work. Just stop being a, stop being a bitch. Stop being a crybaby. Stop moaning. Stop complaining. Like, hang on a second. I'm not complaining. I'm. I'm. It sounds like I am because of the tone of voice, and because I'm saying that it's not positive. Therefore, you can assume it must be negative. Therefore, because I'm saying a bunch of negative things, uh, you can assume it sounds like I'm complaining. But I'm, I'm kind of just proposing the ideas and then asking sincerely what do you do about it and then I say well I know the answer is what do you do about it do anything just do something as opposed to doing nothing which is still doesn't answer the question what the fuck do you do so what the fuck do you do I don't know what the fuck to do <laughs> it's like I don't know what the fuck to do uh, and I think that by repeating that over and over again I'll eventually figure it out but so far I haven't the one thing I came close to like I said earlier was forcing yourself to do something that you would otherwise be waiting to do so you're thinking like well I need to get this done but I'll wait till tomorrow to do it or I'll wait till I have a spark of creative inspiration like don't wait around take action and do those things but then what are those things and why should you do them and how do you know that doing them is right so it's like I think I want to write a book but how do I know that I want to write a book well there are two two answers to that um, the first one is just have faith and write the book and then you find out oh hey I didn't want to do that after all or you want to you, you want to like do something and you do it and you realize oh I didn't want to do that apparently you just learn from your mistakes but it's like you put in a lot of work to do that say for example I can't think of examples which is kind of why I suck at articulating what I'm trying to say but you do something that takes a lot of time and it doesn't work out you feel like you wasted even more time but I think did you waste more time figuring out that it was a waste of time or what what would you have done otherwise not what could you have done otherwise what would you have done otherwise so like for example if I didn't write a book what would I do otherwise I would sit around making YouTube videos and playing games and watching YouTube so what would be better would it be a waste of time to waste time wasting time or to waste time making something that sucks and you didn't want to make anyway or once again maybe waiting is the answer like I was saying earlier at this point you know finding any form of romance it's just it's not a great time period for that uh, not in a, in a, in a good uh, economic, financial, or uh, housing, in the independent, that's it, not in the correct independent state for that, so it wouldn't be feasible to to do that, so what do you do, just wait, wait till I'm 30 and then get back in the dating game, that's like 8 years away for me, so... What do I do? Just wait eight years and then figure out what the fuck to do. I mean, I don't want to have to wait anymore. I want to be taking action because, like I said, I feel bad when I'm not. Um, clearly, I don't feel bad enough. Otherwise, I would be doing it. No, it's like it's actually fucking tearing me apart like uh, Lisa does to the Tommy Wiseau character in the, the movie The Room. You know, he's like, you're tearing me apart, Lisa. 
um, yeah, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a great feeling. Uh, so I'm looking for answers. I seem to not be able to find any, even, even with the amount of people saying really, like, you can, you can do almost anything, but it, it, it's like, how do you know it matters? How do you know it's the right thing to do? Like, anything can be the right thing as long as it's not the wrong thing. And you can usually say, well, I know it's wrong. Try and do the opposite of that. Where does it get you? It doesn't get you. It's not been getting me anywhere. Because I still feel like I'm wasting time. I still feel like I'm not getting anything out of my existence. I still feel like my existence is not being justified. I feel like I'm suffering. Like, I, that's a very... Like, uh, it's a very inaccurate term because this is a different type of suffering. There's like people who are starving uh, and people who have no home whatsoever, and they're genuinely, genuinely suffering. And I'm only suffering mentally, I suppose. Um, and it's such a such a stupid thing because I have everything I could possibly want, other than meaning and purpose and it's like well you don't need those to survive hey may maybe you don't but it still makes existence th it doesn't make it feel any better it's like hey your life's great stop complaining it's like oh you're right i'm sorry uh i'll i'm uh, you're right all the problems that i've been thinking about I've just vanished. I feel fine now. Except, it's, no, it doesn't work like that. Should it? Should it work like? Should it be that simple? Like, yeah, it's fine. You know, you nothing, nothing, nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. You fine. You don't have to wake up in the morning with the sound of like uh, a bell and um, mine rocks and then go into a shower full of gas a gas chamber you're not, you're not in a concentration camp you're not in a gulag so it's like your life's fine you don't have to wake up in a trench with your feet rotting off you got nothing to complain about um but it doesn't feel like that and i'm just wondering why and i'm saying because there's no conflict. It's like, well, go find some conflict. Find something to deal with that's difficult. It's like, okay, I will. Um, where do I look for that? Because I don't want to start conflicts with people, like arguing with people, because that's not really... That's, that's conflict, but that's kind of unnecessary conflict. It's unproductive conflict. It's not... It's like, it would make you feel alive, you know going up to a stranger and punching them in the face uh, assuming they're sort of like bigger than you and they have a violentish looking t tendency to them and they'd punch you back and you get into a fight with them that's definitely some conflict that would make you feel alive and then you could definitely say hey I, I'm alive and I exist but I mean it's not the kind of conflict I'm on about you need some conflict that, some form of suffering that justifies your existence. Uh, the rewards don't have to be actual reward rewards, but I don't know. I think that's where I'm at. Find something that's actually challenging that isn't, you know, violence, because that's not productive. Find something that's challenging and useful. And then that gives your life some meaning. How can you how can you be sure? Well, try it and find out. If if you're wrong, you're wrong. At least you tried. And I think that's probably what what I'm gonna do. So as far as what the fuck do you do? Try anything. That's my answer. What do you do? Try shit. Just try a bunch of shit. Even stuff you think might not be worth doing, do it anyway. Like, oh hey, that was great. Try it try try some variations of that. Try a lot of things, 
and say, hmm, I like some elements of this, I like some elements of that, and then it mix them together. You don't even have to like what you're doing. All you need to know is when you're doing something that makes you feel meaningfully engaged, you'll know because you won't be thinking about the fact that you're not feeling meaningfully engaged. You'll just feel it and that'll be good enough. So that's my conclusion on this. It's not necessarily, I don't know if it's going to help me that much. I don't know if it's going to help you that much, but just try a bunch of shit. Just do shit. Thanks for watching.